Hey there, listeners. Welcome back to Filling in the Gaps Rerolled. We hope you had some great gaming since the last time you listened. And if you're new to us, welcome to the table. We are Filling in the Gaps Rerolled, and we may not be an actual play podcast, but we hope our podcast podcast can help you actually play. We are three DMs who create stories slash sessions. Wow, sorry. We are three DMs who create stories slash sessions based on randomized theme and scenario tables. We determine this by rolling two d20s. It's just a great way to get your creative juices flowing and work out those DMing muscles. With that, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Sam or DM Mambo here, serving as your transition captain for today's episode. I am David. I'm going to be rolling for themes today. And I am Malcolm. I'll be rolling for scenarios. Joining us today is basically your uh, go-to D&D helpful hints and tips YouTube channel. These videos have helped us, as well as many others, smith uh, your PCs, NPCs, and, well, general knowledge of D&D. And, well, since I'm uh, ruining out of puns here, well, let's just get to our introductions. Today we have the pleasure of hosting Runesmith. Well, hi there. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. We're we're thrilled. Of course. Very. Yeah, we're big fans. It's going to be a good time. Is there anything you'd like to uh, plug or anything, your social media as such? Yeah, I'm actually working on a lot of projects all over the place, but the main ones right now that I could draw attention to would be RuneSmith, the channel that you suggested or recommended. That's just on YouTube. You can search that up. We've also got a company running called Eldermancy. We have finished writing and published. We're just about done manufacturing our first book, Stibble's Codex of Companions, which is a bunch of little monsters that you can add to your table, D&D. And we're actually working on our second book. I don't know how much I can say about it now, but it is about taverns and the landing page will be done in like a week. Very cool. Well, sounds really awesome, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I have a question just to kick things off. Um, what is uh, your guys' worst uh, either DM blunder or player blunder that you've had that you can think of that where you just really wish you could take that one back? Yeah, I'd like to hear some of yours first so I can have a frame <laughs> of reference. I don't know about taking it back, but I make mistakes all the time as a DM and I think they're kind of fun just because sometimes you can accept it as a mistake. Sometimes if you give, like I had, I run a Pokemon 5e game (laughs) and I told my party that there was a specific ranger coming. Ranger Rick was going to come and meet with them and I totally forgot his name. And so when the ranger showed up, I introduced it as a completely different woman and they caught on (laughs) to that. And (laughs) so I had to, I could either admit my mistake or come up with an entirely new plot thread. And that's what I did instead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quick cleanup there. That's a good way to just, all right, retconned like that. <laughs> and she was from like the bad team and they had to deal with this whole thing. And then mm. Ranger Rick shows up eventually. It was fun. From Team Missile. <laughs> <laughs> I, for mine, I would say I'm going to use when I played Cyberpunk 2020 because well, I understood the rules <laughs> i did not check if my party understood the rules <laughs> and that was on me i was just like guys i got something we can do other than D. let's play cyberpunk and everyone was like real jazzed about it and then we we didn't know what we were doing and so <laughs> at a point the other issue was i didn't check with them what tone the game should be because i knew mm-hmm. what cyberpunk was this really gritty dark like terminator-esque Dystopian. game yeah. but yeah for the game it was really just like oh i'm gonna make this really dark and really edgy and they hated that they were just like everything they're like we can't win and i was like that's the point of cyberpunk is to like overcome and they're like no but it's not you're not making it a fun experience you're making it like (laughs) we get mugged if we walk outside i was like that's cyberpunk it literally says in the book to do that Mm -hmm. and so i ended up uh altering it and i remember this part very specifically because the one thing that was the linchpin that they really didn't like was i took like modern day celebrities 
and put them in cyberpunk because it's like 2020 <laughs> is now a year that we exist in like mm. we would be able to see that so who would be around <laughs> like so i threw in i remember specifically Alt universe I was like, will smith <laughs> yes actually the smiths were a thing and they were a cr- <laughs> they were a family crime like people it was crazy um but, so not unlike our dimension <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, the big one was that the point where they were sick of it was I had them because they had psych- they were starting to get cyber psychosis so it's like you go to a therapist mm. and it's Tom Cruise and they were just like we are so done we don't care we are over the and I was like and I noticed it they didn't say any of it it was all in their faces and I was just like that is the moment where I was like I messed up and so I just had him go. I had, I was like, a lady walks in and goes, what are you doing in my office? And this guy who claimed to be Thomas Cruise just burst out the window and runs away. And they're like, wait, so who was that? And I was like, that was Tom Cruise. I was like, Tom Cruise is crazy in this timeline? And that was, was like, Professor yeah. Thomas. <laughs> that was so per- it, and from there, I ended up finding the balance of like making things crazy, but making them like their own thing hmm. and not letting them win a bit more so they didn't feel so... Be so discouraged for, yeah, yeah like even though i again i always stand by the rule book legitimately says hey if your players aren't doing anything rob them <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's that's like, a general rule for most rpgs it's a uh, chekhov's gun in a way where <laughs> if nothing is happening someone runs in with a gun no that's actually chekhov's gun is a different one <sighs> if you show a gun in the first act yeah. it has to go off yeah. by the end of the second there's there's like a law of when nothing's happening make something abstract happen break the door it's down it's kind of like deus ex right like um, breaking the door down yeah essentially there's some fancy writing term for it but i guess it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah um i can't think of it right now either <laughs> yeah i and, know what and you on, mean i just don't yeah. remember the name on that note i will admit that i have a terrible memory so not a lot of things come to mind but i think just about every dungeon master blunder falls into like a set of categories and the first one is obviously um not giving the players w- what they expect. And that kind of stems from players just having expectations about your game, which really shouldn't be a thing. But um, it's them not agreeing with the way you're presenting the game because you're expecting different things. You not knowing enough about the rules or you over prepping the game. That's one of the biggest blunders I think I've ever made. And most of the time when I get asked this question, I refer to the end of Tesseract where the players got completely bested by a villain who I designed to be realistically villainous (laughs) and not video gamey. So he (laughs) killed every one of them in a very strategized (laughs) way. Um, They didn't like that just because it was too hard. They got mugged. But um, I think the very first session was an equally blunderous event because I wasted like two hours before the game just prepping and prepping and prepping all these side quests and stuff and the players got into town and they had an item like a hot item essentially that people were after so they're like let's leave town and i was like all right i'll throw away six pages of text (laughs) but yeah i think learning to improv is the best way to avoid blunders and just accepting that you're going to make the mistake of not remembering things Mm mm-hmm Yeah, I got to say one of my biggest blunders was one when I first started DM being I'm still like very new was like, yeah, I I got the rules down. We've played. I've been a player. I got Mm. these rules. Uh And then I'm like, (laughs) I wrote a book and I messed up. I was like, I I don't have these rules. (laughs) I don't know. them. Uh, So always uh, reread the (laughs) Dungeon Master Guide whenever you get a chance. Yeah. Um, but, uh, don't, yeah, I, I would also add to that. Don't just like read it front to yes, back. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like nitpick sections that you're interested in at the time and just enjoy that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of my more recent blunders was, uh, I had some friends who were like, Hey, we want to play like D and D more regularly. Um, because our, our one DM kind of just was like, I need some time. So I started to play with them and it, Turns out that without really knowing, they both made a wood elf, that female wood elf that started with the letter A, and they sent me there, and it ended with the letter A too. So I was like, okay. So I started the thing off, we're going great, and I like flip flop their backstories. So I'm like, why is <laughs> why is they not why are they not interacting? Like this is like juice right here for them. And then I was like, oh, I flip flopped them. I have it. <laughs> that's like that's like having twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I'm going to put all of your character sheet in red and yours in green just to keep track. (laughs) And I'm going to make you wear little things on your forehead. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, 
I have a separate question. We can move on. Um, shall we roll? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So as we get ready for rolling, uh, everyone is going to roll except for me. Uh, Malcolm and David are going to roll on their perspective tables. And Logan here is going to roll two d20s with advantage. And he's going to put one roll in for themes and one roll in for uh, advan- or, uh, scenarios. And so we'll end up with two okay. combinations today. And then you'll choose which okay. one you like the most. So I'm rolling a cumulative four times. No. <laughs> okay. One All right. roll. Then I got bench. two and 20. Nice. I have an 18. And then my scenario is a four. Sorry, that might have confused you. I type four. Yeah, if it's an audio show, it's best to call them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I was like, where are they? They're there. A two and 20. And a four. And <laughs> David, yours is an 18. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for our first mashup. We have Day at the Races by Flare Gun Fish and Whirly Can paired up with Party Wakes Up in School and Needs to Pass Finals uh, to Wake to Wake Up by LaGravy. Um, and then we also have Game Show and Down a Well. <laughs> so those are two combos. Game Show, Down the Well, and Day at the Races and Party Needs to Wake Up uh oh party wakes up in school and needs to pass finals to wake up oh don't forget to say that uh down the well was done by soldier oh soldier yep Seal. sorry soul that's right oh, oh I- okay <laughs> it's a tough matchup but i think there's a lot to work with here so, so you can pick any one for the okay one i'll the open it to the floor because i think day at the races could be interpreted that uh you're waking up at school with what responsibility was it uh, you need to pass your finals in order to wake up. I really like the pass the finals one. Just Okay, because you can incorporate day at the races by just you have to pass them quickly. Maybe there's a ticking time bomb or something. Um, I think Game Show Down a Well has... It's vague enough to be just about anything, but and that you, might make it difficult. So You can mix I think the we, two as well. So it could be oh. Game Show oh, we can, in the oh, school okay, cool. or day at the races okay. down a well. Hmm. So whichever combination piques your interest. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I'll simplify it and go with the first one. Day at the races where you wake up at school to pass the finals. So, okay. <laughs> I'm just getting the juices flowing here. <laughs> if it's no, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah. So, you have to pass a final. Finals are extremely vague and they're at any subject. Let's say, I think just to make it really simple to start, I think you're dreaming as a horse. <laughs> And your final <laughs> is to win a race. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> that's a whole different direction. I thought we were going to do like this high school AU. But yeah, I- this is like a high school anime where everyone's horses. Yeah, so oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so equestrian girls from uh, My Little Pony. Don't ask how I know about that. Yeah, that exist. we'll go with that. <laughs> Except no, they have to actually be horses because you're racing. I don't think they do that because they're people. They're like Tangent. half horse, half people. It's very C- centaurs. <laughs> yeah. Centaurs, yeah. yeah. I did not picture that as a centaur for some reason. <laughs> it's like that "Sorry to Bother You" movie. There are a few elements we can play with. Does anyone want to pitch in? I really like your horse idea. Um, yeah. Of it being like now I, but now I do want horse people. Now that we've discussed the possibility. <laughs> mm-hmm. Plus, that is an actual race in D anD. d Is they're like I think they are like equestrian or something as the official title, Equinids, and they're like so, maybe <laughs> oh. they're like celestial children. It's, it's oh yeah, I'm a bit familiar. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I like absurdity, so I, I think <laughs> I think we should stick with uh, just sentient talking horses like Mister Ed. Yeah. Oh, that is also great. So is this so let, your party yeah. falls asleep and wakes up as horses? Your party, okay, yes. Uh, you're essentially trapped in like a mental state where you're in a different dimension and that's kind of what a dream is but this one is so lucid and for some reason you're a horse in a world with horse people (laughs) but there are still a lot of elements we have to add like what what class are we in why did we take it who's the teacher and how do the finals function what if it's just high school for horses like you okay. <laughs> just everyone is a horse and you're going through class like they wake up maybe they each wake up in like different classes so one is, or if you have a party of four two are in math class and two of them are in like english class and then you you have to dig around for like some horse related topics to like do a quick class scene and then they have to you know typical anime just get up and leave school and mm. they come back together and then when they try to wake each other up 
some kind of hint comes in of like you have to pass the test before you can wake up or even you can have like a nightmare like a nightmare scheme going on where one of like the teachers or stuff says if you don't pass this t- this trial you are going to stuck be a, st- a horse for the rest of your life <laughs> you're going to have to retake the whole semester <laughs> have to retake um, the whole <laughs> horse <laughs> So you have, like, months in a dream. What we could do is um, we could have it be that it's, like you were saying, that kind of absurdity Mm -hmm. of the different, like, things. So it's not just, oh, this horse has to pass an art final, but this horse has to pass an art final by, like, by, like, punching a person. Like, it's (laughs) all things that don't really make sense. And then you're just like, but why? Because dream logic makes sense Mm -hmm. only in dreams. Yeah, with dreams, you can constantly reassert a specific theme until they get it, because that's just (laughs) like how you can DM a dream. So I think we could either cut it up into two segments or we could make it one big one where you have to like pass a final in order to get to some like a juvenile race thing that they do where everyone gets together after class and they enter the race and that's the day at the races angle. Or we could make that like the you could incorporate each of the what are the core classes like science math yeah stuff yeah. like that incorporate yeah. it into like a ring race <laughs> so as they're doing that they have to like answer questions to get past hurdles or something what if it's like the uh classic big football game and you're the jock who didn't study like you're it's like yeah. well you since you didn't pass your test you're off the team and it's like oh no we're off the team unless we pass these tests okay I and like then that. you have to get to the big race at the yeah. end so let you still have to win let's cement that so we're in a horse high school and we have to pass our finals in order to enter a race but the race is also a part of the school hmm. it's not a juvenile thing i think to add to that, like the mm-hmm. reason we're in this kind of dream state or demi plane, um, there's a deity whose uh, fa- sacred animal is the horse, and it is Kurgis, and he is, I think that's how you pronounce it. He's like the deity of healthy competition, sport, and physical development. So that could be like a good underlying theme for why you have to do all this physical exercise while you're going through actual yeah. school. Okay. That makes it stupid, but it also makes perfect <laughs> sense. So, what was the deity's name again? Kurgis? K-U-R-G-E-S-S. Can it just be our gym coach? Yeah, I was going to say, it's the gym teacher, and this is this is your phys ed final, and the dream is actually made by this deity. <laughs> so, l- like, it's manifested as a test for you, and they just really like horses, so that's what it's yeah, serving as. They're like, their party's like, why am I a horse? And the, the, the god appears. Because god said yeah, so. Yeah, he's like, yeah. the god himself is a horse just like a horse with a whistle and he's like <laughs> he's like what the fuck is wrong with horses <laughs> and this can be something you throw at your party when they like skirt around um doing an actual competition just mm. not necessarily as punishment but just as a consequence yeah. of them having a cool idea to get around a physical competition Okay. And then the deity of physical competition being upset. Okay, then I, I think I think we can make it this, where you have to pass, like, your phys ed final as a horse. <laughs> but because you haven't been studying because you just woke up, so, like, you don't remember anything, technically, because that's how dreams work. You also, at the same time, have to pass a different subject final <laughs> as you're doing, like, the phys ed race. So, let's agree on a subject, and then we can actually make the thing. What are horses bad at? <laughs> English. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Mr. Ed. English has to be taught by Mr. Ed, though. Side he, note. Yeah, he was outstanding. <laughs> I think math could be fun just because, like, counting is a thing. It's like a trick that horses in real life often mm-hmm. do where they'll, like, tap their um, hoof on the ground a certain number of times to count. Oh, yeah. Signaling, mm-hmm. which is essentially just horse English. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird to think about. That's a subject I'm really interested in. <laughs> Animal speech. Yeah, I majored in horse English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when I stomp my foot twice and kick back some dirt, that means you better back up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> because as a DM, you could you could print off, like, different like you know horse language to give to your players be like if you see these happening (laughs) you would understand like you got to back up or this horse is trying to flirt with you it'd probably be like a really absurd animal handling check where you're dealing with other students yeah or 
Would you even have animal handling anymore, though? Because you yourself, like, that's for people having to approach other animals. Well, the way that this, that most dreams would function is if your body changes form, you still have your intelligence, wisdom, charisma scores. Uh, that's true. So it would be difficult for you to communicate. But if you were smart or wise enough, you could figure out how, like, horses talk. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. Because... Because you're going to want to keep your your players, like, comfortable. You don't want to change all their stats or anything on them. So, yeah. I would keep just your... Here's your sheet, except you're a horse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I offer horse-story. Horse-story. Okay. Yeah. Actually, that's perfect. It, 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 there's a lot you could do with that. Just horse history. Um they're not your players aren't going to know a thing about horses, and if they do, yeah. they're going to be jazzed. <laughs> You're like, you know, <laughs> so you, you have, have to do some back research. In the game? Like, when were horses introduced in America? <laughs> um, what kind of horse did what's his name ride on, or whatever? Welcome to class. Yeah. We'll be discussing sea biscuitian ethics. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I think it's a <laughs> history test that happens at the same time as a race. So you could pull the racing mechanics from um, Tomb of Annihilation. In Cholt, you race on dinosaurs, <laughs> but instead of controlling the dinosaur, it's you. So I like this. I think we've got enough elements to actually start paving the way. So what's the introduction? <laughs> Obviously, you wake up naked because you're a horse. <laughs> it's, and boy, boy, is it embarrassing. <laughs> it, I mean, like, you you freak out that you're naked, then you realize everybody's naked because yeah. you're all horses. <laughs> That's the second realization. The first thing you think is, wait, I'm naked. Second is, oh, I'm a horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, are, wh- where, what area would they wake up in? Would they, like, instantly be starting the track? Is this, like, a really fast-paced mission? It depends on how you want to... Um, yeah, so set it we'll up. leave it up to the For this one, the I think it'd be good just or... to start in a stable. <laughs> okay. Even really, though the I thought of them just, like, waking up in class as a horse. Like, that classic, like, jolt awake thing yeah, that people you know always what? have. That's that's a familiar uh, waking sequence. So, we'll say that they're, like, at, at their tables. And they're, they're probably, like... So, the introduction would be as you fall asleep and you instantly hear, like... A bunch of rhythmic tapping and aggressive, like, breathing very close to your head. And you wake up and you're in horse school, in horse <laughs> class, and the teacher's standing over you, pissed that you're not paying attention. <laughs> Asking you to read. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can open with horse English, have Mr. Ed there being, like, what? tapping his foot, going like, yo, <laughs> we're supposed to be, you're supposed to be answering. Could do that, or we could just go straight into history and not just have the two themes be prevalent. <laughs> That's true. I think, I think Mr. Ed should definitely make a cameo, and he should be <laughs> like, all right, look. I know you're you're doing really bad in horsery, but your English grades, they're like a C minus. We got to bring that up. We'll talk <laughs> later. And then you have to go to the races. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think this is this is this is going to be fun. Um, <laughs> I think what we could do also is is that opening scene of just, you know, the typical like anime scene of read these like read these out loud. Like read these pages out loud, and that's when you could yeah. put in this in the script of why you're there. And mm-hmm. if you're going off where like they've skipped the um, what is the god's name again? Kyrgyz. Kyrgyz. You're like, oh yeah. So you can have like Kyrgyz putting in like pages, and you can hand it off to one of your players. Be like, read this out loud. Um, and you could write something like clever, like such as such as like, this is why you're a horse. Uh, of course, mm. you know, this is why you're a horse. <laughs> yeah, of course, <Yeah. laughs> um, <laughs> make it rhyme. Yeah, make it rhyme. And you're like, yeah, next time do my damn mission or something like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe like part of it, it could be not a red herring, but foreshadowing. If like part of the history lesson was uh, in relation to Kyrgyz and his involvement in the creation of the world or something. Oh, I like that. That way you could learn about his domain without it being, like, directly implemented. Yeah, you could have it be, like, the horse teacher be like, this is important stuff. You need to (laughs) learn. And then it's the thing of that actually, again, yeah, coming back and being like, oh, Kyrgyz put us here for all the... I'm like, wait a minute, it was Kyrgyz this whole time. (laughs) The god of horses and competition. (laughs) (laughs) I know that guy. (laughs) Okay, so we've we've got horse school down. We could expand on it if we wanted to do a campaign. Uh, a dream campaign that takes place over one night. <laughs> I mean, like... I think you could technically do that. You'd probably piss off your players. Yeah, it would I, would, I would keep this to like one to yeah. three sessions, depending on how focused your, your players are. 
You mean you guys don't want to run a whole campaign where you're horses? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fun, but it wouldn't be a good, like, addition to an existing campaign. Oh, that's true. That much is true. Yeah. I think if the first, I think maybe if they fail the, if they fail, um, the race the first time depending on how we want to run the mechanics like the dream just mm-hmm. starts over again and they hit kind of like groundhog day and they have to oh, think yeah. of different but i think there should be an inclusion of a horse bully you know that typical yes, bully jock guy who's like so there's uh different like horse uh breeds yeah. in mm-hmm. D already so there's like a riding horse and a war horse so it would definitely be a war horse <laughs> it's just like kind of a kind of a prick we can make him like the the actual like I don't know sports quarterback of the team. I don't know what that equates to in horse races. <laughs> it's probably just the one with like no, because the one with the best record would be like a a fast horse. Because war horses are slower, so maybe he's taking like a different class that you're not a part of. <laughs> he just likes to mess with you. <laughs> he's the TA. Maybe he's the <laughs> fastest because you're not there. Like imagine the TA being your bully. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> or what if what if one of like the classes is like they have to learn how to be ridden eventually mm-hmm. so you could go on mechanics of like they have like the cpr dummies that they put on. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> like, so you can't throw your adventure Crash off oh what them. if it's like an adventuring school for horses where they learn how to like travel with adventurers but they have to learn how to okay. not throw them off and they have to be good horses or they'll be left behind <laughs> a lot of depth to this dream <laughs> <laughs> oh we go in depth here yeah <laughs> okay uh so, yeah, he's just kind of an abstract bully that keeps prevailing. I do like the groundhog theme because that's kind of the, the dream message is if you don't learn it, you just it keeps presenting itself mm-hmm. and just repeating the mission would be a good one. But maybe it would start at different points like such re zero or just wherever you made the worst decision. You start over a little bit before that. <laughs> Maybe whatever horse teacher you have in the beginning is what, like, gives you a, a different, like, clue, cryptic clue of, mm-hmm. like, oh, and it's like, yeah. you really need to pay more attention to, like, the classes. Otherwise, you're not going to make it in time. And next time mm-hmm. you come in, it's like, oh, it's like, well, you almost did good that time. You got to be on this and, like, you know, so on yeah. and such forth. It, it could even be more subtle where, like, each time you're introduced, the teacher is telling you to read a page, but the page is always different. <laughs> yeah. And it's I like, like all right, here's the god, and then it's it's like uh, he punishes people who don't complete these things or don't do this or that. And it just like goes further and further into a psychosis. It'd be crazy. <laughs> this is a scary game we're writing. <laughs> <laughs> we also do that a lot. Don't worry about it. It's a reality. Okay. <clears throat> what, what point do we go to next? I mean, I think that's all that's left really is the race. We've gotten okay. through this one really fast. I want to add a couple extra classes just okay. based on okay. what horses do in our world. So we kind of went over sport, which is the racing. There would also be like work classes where horses are being used to move stuff. Um, like a wood shop. Warfare we kind of touched on as well. There could be like carriage etiquette. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're you're pulling certain types of vehicles, how many other people have to be, how many other horses have to be with you to carry it. Mm-hmm. There could also be like therapy horse classes where you're going to be oh, yeah. like an emotional support horse. <laughs> 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 oh, we have to have the chillest horse there. <laughs> Just like herding horses, mm-hmm. like cowboys mm. and stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> is is there like a um? There's a what's the word? A cultural divide between horses and sheep people who also have a <laughs> like they're segregated and they go to a different school and you have to learn how to deal with them. <laughs> I was this you you kind of just sparked me of of an idea of like if, if you want to use this to give your player something if they're trying to learn like a new skill or proficiency like say your um your your barbarian wants to learn animal handling as a proficiency skill you could kind of homebrew this for like if they finish this one task they get that proficiency so or if they want to learn how to, um, you know, ride a horse. Someone wants to be proficiency in like land uh, or horse riding or something like that. That's when you get into the, like the the chariot etiquette or the the carriage etiquette. Yeah. Of oh, you need to do this, this, and this, and now you can. F- and since uh, Curgis is the god of horses, like now you can feel the horse's pain for when you do something to it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I also, not to detract, because I know you were going to come up with a few other classes, but I just wanted to say really quick that if this dream was instigated by a god, it'd be really interesting if when you woke up, you had like a mount from your dream. Yes. <laughs> that just appears it's, it's like there's a horse body. there now. And it, yeah. The body it's, you were oh, in. That, yeah. yeah so much. <laughs> and it's just like a normal horse. Or maybe it's an extension of you, like a familiar. That'd be cool. But Oh, I like the extension. It could be the, you could give your players like the find, um, the find steed spell. And this way oh, they don't have to go. Steeper. Yeah. Yeah. This way they don't have to go and buy one or something like that. This is why they always have that. If your if your campaign yeah. is based on travel a lot, this way th- Th- there's tech there's a magical charm mechanic in the DM's guide that certain monsters utilize. So it could just be like a, a token or a charm where you can summon, you can cast this spell without anything like three times overall since you went through that. <laughs> this is like a fucking. Did anyone play RuneScape when they yeah. were a little bit younger? I only remember the sheep part. <laughs> yeah. Do you know like the random events, like the sandwich lady who would show up? Yeah. And like give you random stuff. This is like one of those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't know what to do. So I were playing horses today, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you were going to think of some other classes. The only other class was kind of, I'm not sure how this would or what it would be called. But because horses are used in so many different products, it would be like this terrifying class that all the horses have to take to know what people are going to do to them if they fail. What gummy bears are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the glue factory. <laughs> no, no, no. See, that's their, like, dare program. They have, like, the horse people come in and they're like, look, this is what happens if you're not a good racer. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> it's just a gummy bear. Like a five pound gummy bear. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, that would be great. This one really wrote itself, though. <laughs> yeah. This, this, okay. This, so this, this was great. We've, we've made it out of history class, and now we're at the race. We're at, like, the physical ed final of maybe not the semester, but, like, our whole education. <laughs> so this is super important. There's, like cheerleader horses or some weird stuff that people can gawk over um but people are betting on you (laughs) um so what kind of uh encounters or obstacles do we want to have going during the race because i think players would get bored Mm -hmm. of just roll your dice here and roll your dice there so well i know we said something about taking a test as well mm -hmm. you could also incorporate because the bully if he's a a war horse, he'd be like in the sidelines so he could throw horse popcorn or like a, a big thing of carrots with like the barber stripes on it. He throws a big basket of that at you as you're racing. Mess you up. <laughs> you could have it be that the environments within the race are different to like yeah. test like if you're an actual good horse. We- yeah. So you could roll for like each type of area. So there'd be like Arctic, maybe desert where the sand slows you down, the forest where there's a bunch of obstacles. You definitely have to work on your jumping. Because that's that's how, how dreams function is there's just a different environment. Oh, yeah. Like maybe after every hurdle of like, you know, uh, when you jump over after after when you complete the jump, that's a new terrain mm-hmm. to go yeah. through. And then maybe you set up maybe, I don't know, five or so and they have to keep completing them as long as now does the whole party have to win or is it just one of the party members? You I don't would know. say that one one party member could probably do it and wake up, and they would get the boon, and they could wake everyone else up. <laughs> oh, okay. And they'd like wake up screaming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was a whore. <laughs> <laughs> and then throughout the whole mm. like rest of the campaign, they have like horse like ticks still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To add a little bit of combat into this, just because mm. I feel like players would get bored without any. Yeah. You could have like a section where you're doing these races, maybe they're um, like jousting where you have someone who comes in to ride you and they you act as the mount still. So you'll take the actions yeah. that a mount can, but you can't attack unless your rider uses their extra action or whatever. And it would have to be because it's the god of friendly competition. So if anyone cheats, you're going to get messed up. But maybe like an NPC or a subconscious dream horse starts like trying to mess with you <laughs> and you have to overcome that mm-hmm. and then you get like a boon or something. I mean, you could also have it be that you're fighting the, uh, you, like, I picture this when we jump through different areas, when you go, you could have it be that there's people, and you could just have bandits and folks, kind of <laughs> like, uh, what, uh, Sam was saying earlier, the idea of, um, having it be that, like, you're doing almost 
combat that your horse experiences when you are doing mounted combat, you just don't have a mount. Or you could do like a flower sack mount, and so you have to protect them <laughs> while fighting other people oh, as yeah. a horse. I, I, w- I was going to say, because in certain dreams, you can, I, I, speaking from experience, you can go from first person to third person and back and mm. forth. So maybe like you take a step back and you realize like as the camera zooms out that there's a person riding you and they have a lance and a shield and you take control of both the horse and that person. That could work too. Yeah. That'd be fun. Give everyone like a level two <laughs> fighter. Yeah. Whatever the knight. Uh, no, because you'd have to. I I think a knight is a stat block. It might be in Xanathar's or something. Oh. It is. You could do I maybe gladiator because if they're a lower level, it'd be fun to emulate like a fifth. It's a challenge rating five character just with a lance and a shield that'd be cool (laughs) if your horse dies you wake up again or you repeat the dream oh Oh, yeah 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 Mm -hmm. for horse street you could have it be the fact that it's like jumping through the great battles that these horses have been through is what you're re-experiencing so it's like you're a horse and and you could weirdly incorporate that into the overarching plot that you're (laughs) detracting from Mm -hmm. so like you see these great battles happen around you and you see the one that you're like researching or that was important to the artifact that you're looking for and you see the guy that has this artifact and he's like running off in a different direction it lets you lore dump on your players while also yeah. just coming completely out of left field <laughs> <laughs> the horse god gave you the info you wanted it just cost you some like entertainment a lot of trauma <laughs> and then you're that's another thing is if you wake up do you remember it yeah yeah i think roll. of that like uh oh gosh i forgot who plays doc brown but he's in a movie and he goes like i was frozen today and he like freaks out about it and so mm. i always think of like that level of like trauma for a character who's oh, been yeah. transformed i still don't know what happened <laughs> i was a horse and then i woke up and i was a man again i don't oh, know christopher lloyd that, <laughs> yes, yeah, that thank sense. you <laughs> the delivery lines up <laughs> yeah that'd be great i think also if you have just one party member who completes the race maybe passing the race doesn't mean coming in first but as long as they can <laughs> it's doing it it's doing it honorably yeah without mm. cheating that, yeah and so if you only have one player who does that they're the one who gets that and they like congratulate the winner yeah they get the boon but they also when they wake up they're the only ones who remember it so everyone else is like, that'd be awesome. That'd be really cool. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Or maybe it's first. They don't remember be- ever being a horse, but they just remember right, winning this battle or something like that. I hate, I hate to be that specific weeaboo, but does anyone watch, uh, or has anyone watched Jojo? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, first Death of all, 13. we're all weeaboos here. Yeah. It's so- Death yeah. 13. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. One of the best episodes. It'd be like that where like you wake up and you're like, oh, that's right. You guys don't remember. Yeah. We almost died. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, oh, yeah. You <laughs> forgot cool. <laughs> nothing. It's fine. <laughs> we could have the war horse uh, be the one who's not doing it honorably, or like if yeah, we the keep bully. the idea of a person of you having to like lead your person through these combat trials and like oh. throw all the way. He could just be like, "I made it through," and it's like, "Yeah, but where's your rider? Like he's dead, like three <laughs> <Yeah>. miles back." <laughs> you lost him to get ahead. What if the bully is like? Uh, a, a BBEG from like the real world that also got sucked in. So now you, <laughs> so like, you know, maybe that's one of those, one of those like bad guys that, you know, always like the Jesse and James that always are there and you're like, oh, all right. Oh, all right, Skeletor. The recurring. Yeah, villain. here we come. Yeah. But like if he wins and if he's the only one or if they're the only ones who wins, they get the boom. Then he shows up on like a sick ass yeah. horse. <laughs> he's like, I get this from my dream. I kicked her ass in. <laughs> the horse has got like six Remember legs. Remember that dream we all had? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was gonna say uh, maybe as an alternative or possibly as an addition if he's a war horse he could be like a bully with his two lackeys like in um, yes. skyward sword <laughs> where one of them enters the race but he's not involved <laughs> so for these for these historic battles you could even like have a bunch of different times throughout history so you could have like a, a mm. chariot race where you're just in the like big circle um, you would have actual war fields and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot you could do with that. So I, I don't know how the timeline works in people's campaign because it could be different, but you could be like suddenly by my, t- by the force of mitosis, <laughs> your horse is now two horses pulling a carriage, roll initiative. And then 
You know, if you wanted to get real, real crazy about this horse dream, what you could do is like a Planet of the Apes things, where it's like, this is the far future, and the horses, that's the dream, is that it's the far future, and that the horses have taken over, so you can play with all the timeline of mankind, and be like, hey, yeah, there was gladiators, then there was the part where we had laser guns for a second with the horses. If I woke up and I remembered that, I would kill myself. (laughs) (laughs) The future is horses, it doesn't matter. (laughs) it's potential realities (laughs) all right so i think yeah i think we've got like all of it there yeah is there anything anything anyone wants to add before we go to the recap and synopsis this is a shorter one but yeah this this really wrote itself (laughs) yeah i move i move fast we could explore the other one (laughs) (laughs) yeah no i think we should i think this is a nice one where you know, you can add it in as a one one time off, or you can extend it for two. If especially if you're having like writer's block and you're like, I don't know where the yeah. what to do with these guys right now. There's too many <laughs> too many plot holes. There are too many strings to pull on, and they don't know what to do. So uh, yeah, why don't we move into the um, recap and synopsis? Uh, Logan, is there anyone which one you'd like to do over the other? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, um, would you like to do the recap or synopsis? I think. The recap is probably more important because that kind of paves the way for the synopsis. Yeah. I mean, you can, or both. We've also yeah, had. Yeah, I, th- I thought that's what you meant. So Yeah, that works too. Let me try to. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try to run through it to the best of my ability. <laughs> so it would start when the players fall asleep and they wake up being woken up in class in horse school by their uh, horstery teacher who, who tells them to read the page about the god that's making this whole crazy event happen. And after some lengthy discussion there that you could probably just kind of monologue, uh, the players are rushed off to their phys ed final. That is, uh, who's the teacher for this? It's the god himself right mm-hmm. oh yeah it's, we didn't it's like we a, didn't say that but yeah i like that <laughs> yeah so it, it's like a re-manifestation so they describe him and then you see all of these traits or virtues or maybe just physical attributes in in this fifth head teacher and he's like all right the race is about to start <laughs> it's gonna be a doozy <laughs> <laughs> and um then yeah the whole race just consists of you jumping through different realities or histories or whatever applies to the campaign that you're running and as you're doing that you can change from first or third perspective just like what happens who's doing what you could give them gladiators and stuff gladiators and stuff and once they reach the oh i actually skipped over the bully (laughs) of course there would be a bully that happens probably before you start the races he would be introduced a lot like gruce is the guy's name that's just it's horse gruce from (laughs) skyward sword and his little lackeys and he's like you're nothing kid you're 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 a nobody and uh, then you get into the races and you see one of his lackeys and you see him in the stands and he's got like a bunch of carrots he's gonna huck at you (laughs) like a like donkey kong throwing barrels (laughs) <laughs> and as you, as you run through, you have to deal with all this uh, dishonesty, and which I, I think that the teacher should probably reinforce that this is an honest competition. Cheating won't be tolerated. So, like, the players know not to mess with other horses. And um, once you get to the end, if you survive or if your manifested mount survives, and there's probably a little bit of a following event where whatever you want to happen happens, I think. Um you could talk to the other people that you fought against. Maybe you forged a bond. Maybe you could talk to the teacher who's the god and ask him some questions about what's going on. Or you repeat it if you messed up, if you didn't learn your lesson. And at the end of it, I would think that whoever did the best or if the party kind of agrees that they've all learned the lesson, everyone wakes up and they get um, a charm, which is just a magical part of D&D where three times until like it has three charges, it's part of your brain, you could just summon a horse for, I think, eight hours. <laughs> And that's the game. Perfect. <laughs> quite, quite the venture. Brilliant recap. Anything you want to add, or anything I skipped over? There's a lot of depth you could explore, yeah, yeah. obviously. But that's. I, that's I love Gru. I love Gruce. <laughs> yeah, Gruce. <laughs> Harus. So like, no, I think you got everything. God. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. I was just thinking over this one's wild. <laughs> yeah, you should see the other podcasts I've been on. <laughs> I always there was one where we made a a giraffe centaur yeah which is just a horrifying concept that we explored yeah <laughs> i just actually came across giraffe centaur art on pinterest the other day and i was like this is oh no this is wild um <laughs> yeah i think it, it devolved into just being a giant centipede oh god oh, no <laughs> 
<laughs> David, did you want to do the synopsis for us then? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. As your chariot screeches to a halt, your uh, enemy finally knocked off theirs. The sand beneath your feet slowly starts to freeze, and a layer of ice fills this arena. Groose the horse throws another carrot that slowly freezes and hits a little harder than the last couple. As this kind of winter wonderland around you appears, you continue to move forward, but the chariot detaches from your back, and there's now just a single rider riding without a saddle, holding a long spear as you run into essentially a face of armored horsemen. You and the tribe behind you, now repopulated, you get to experience the Battle of Frost Hill. (laughs) What do you do? Yeah, if you have one too, it's just like as if you were going to DM it for your players. If you'd pick Mm. one scene that we kind of threw around that you wanted to expand a little bit more on. Okay. Yeah, I'll try and do one. Um, So as you're riding through the desert, the sultan on your back's blade, fresh with blood, as you turn back and you see familiar horse faces now slaughtered and fallen into the ground, you look forward and you see the checkpoint, the marker that you've been looking for. You don't even know, you didn't know that it was there, but now that it's there, you know you've always been looking for it. And as you run toward it and you make the leap, you jump over this strange bar resting in the sand, you enter a lush jungle. And it's not as though you enter the jungle, it's though you've always been in it, as if the desert that you just left was a distant memory, and the sultan is no longer on your back. You are alone, and there are other horses coming after you. You can hear growls in the distance, and you see what looks like piercing eyes of a panther. Then what would you do? (laughs) Also very good. (laughs) Think it'd be fun? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I think the transition scenes are the most interesting. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because in my mind, I was thinking of like just the <laughs> the, the bully scene in like the hallway <laughs> of the of go from yeah I wanted to do that first, <laughs> from but. uh from uh, horsery to uh, going to like <laughs> to, to the PE field where the track is <laughs> you, you struggle to bu- carry your horse book <laughs> yeah <laughs> Chris just knocks it down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You exit, <laughs> you exit the history, your horsery class, and all of a sudden, the books you're holding in your mouth just get slapped out of your mouth and onto the floor as you look up, and there's Groose <laughs> and his two minions just slamming you into a locker. And his horse pump again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really disappointed that we didn't work in Bojack Horseman, come to think of it, but you know. Oh, yeah. Never watched it. <laughs> it's pretty decent. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> He's just there. Yeah. He's that weird hybrid that your brain kind of like is, is trying to create, but can't. He's just in the back of the class. <laughs> Day drinking. <laughs> Day drinking. He's the cool kid. <laughs> so, Grorse knocks the books out of your hands. What happens after that? <laughs> you cry horse tears and you run to your horse bathroom. <laughs> Yeah, the horse. You have to eat lunch. The lunchroom scene. <laughs> no one's friends with troughs. you. Yeah, just troughs. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rumor that it's all horse meat. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Are they omnivores? I think they're vegetarian. Well, they're not cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, herbivores. Yeah, I th- I think they're herbivores. <laughs> <laughs> There's I just a know horses they're, like they're, oats. they're putting stuff in the carrots. <laughs> You're putting stuff in the oats. Now the carrots like the dessert. It's like the little Twinkie that they give you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, salt licks. Hmm. Oh man, <laughs> there's like a communal salt lick. <laughs> <laughs> there's a horseshoe shining class. <laughs> yeah, because there would have to be like human people helping you do stuff like cleaning out your hooves that would make sense though when we're in a dream Mm -hmm. is this just like horses have human slaves yes oh my god (laughs) and the the sheeple are segregated Mm -hmm. (laughs) what a nightmare this would be so weird yeah I want part of me wants to run it, but the other part doesn't know how. <laughs> exactly. Thing. We just discussed a whole hour of how, but I don't we know still how to don't run know. this. Yeah. All right. Well, that was our episode uh, with Runesmith or Logan. So thank you so much for joining on. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Tweet at us at FitGDND for uh, Twitter. Give us the hashtag of FITGDND or uh, FITGRRR. Uh, I'm Sam again. Hashtag, hashtag horse party, hashtag horse girl. 
horse D and D, whatever you guys want, we'll find it. Just let us know. We love to. I like horse D and D. Honestly, horse D and D, right there. Uh, I'm Sam. I was your transition captain uh, for today. You can find me at uh, DM Mambo Five or at Bardic Inspiration D and D on the Twitter. I am David. You can find me at Daedra eighteen. That is D A E D R A one eight. And I'm Malcolm at the Ruler of Rhyme. It's like how it sounds. So cool. <laughs> and you can find me at the underscore Runesmith because a uh, sixty-year-old white woman named Cheryl took Runesmith. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, the underscore Runesmith. God damn it, Cheryl. <laughs> damn it, Cheryl. That's the bully's name now, Cheryl. <laughs> Her last name is Grease. Cheryl's the popular horse. Yeah, Cheryl is Grease's girlfriend. She's the one that you asked out to prom, but said no. <laughs> but said nay. Yes! <laughs> Hey there, thanks for listening to Filling in the Gaps. Our theme music is Today by Limby off of their album Drive. If you like it, you can hear more from them at limby.bandcamp.com or on their actual play podcast, Mombardin. That's Limby spelled L-I-N-D-B-Y. Lastly, we are an Obtuse Audio Studios podcast, and you can learn more about us at obtuseaudio.com. Don't forget to give us a five-star review on Apple iTunes, if that's what you think we deserve, but we hope you do. All right, thanks, have a great day, and uh, be good to each other. What's in your thoughts, oh, what's in your mind? What fills your head and what leaves it behind? It's too much today. It's too much today. Obtuse audio.